tend to forget as sellers that there's a step in between traffic and conversion for Amazon sellers. Like you can get lots of traffic and you can have a great conversion. But if the traffic never clicks to the listing in the first place, even if it's a great converting listing, it doesn't matter how, how high converting the listing is. So Hey everybody, this is Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about the art and science of Amazon click-through rate, the CTR optimization. So what do we need to consider as a good click-through rate? Uh, what are the main ways sellers are increasing their click-through rate? And why is click-through rate optimization so important? All right, join us on another episode of Lunch with Norm, the e-com and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, I just realized I wasn't plugged in. So before our guest comes on, I want to make sure that I'm plugged in so you guys don't get feedback. So give me a second. Usually, if this was our first podcast, I'd be in the fetal position. But 400 podcasts later, I'm cool. <laughs> All right, there we go. So hopefully that will solve the problem. Anyways. As we talked about the art and science of Amazon click-through rate optimization or CTR, our, um, our guest, is, after founding his own seven-figure Amazon brand, uh, he founded Sophie Society and provided excellent PPC launch and PPC management to brands looking to grow fast. He has also owned, advised, and managed dozens of seven and eight-figure brands on Amazon and now mentors others through the Titan Network as a leader in their top tier of sellers. He also, all right, I like this. My son will like this as well. He slaps the bass in a ska band. I didn't know that. You know, uh, I love ska music. But uh, anyways, he plays bass in a ska band when he's not crushing sales on Amazon. And I am talking about first-time guest, Chris Rawlings. So we'll get to him in a second. First, let's have a word from our sponsor. I want to thank Jeff Schick Legal for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. You've probably heard on the podcast about Amazon suspensions. They're very real. It can happen at any time. And when it does happen, how do you get out of it? How does the little guy like you and me get out of these suspensions without paying an arm and a leg in legal fees? This is where Jeff Schick Legal is here to help. For a very low monthly retainer, for only $89, get access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. That's right. You can sit back, relax, enjoy that cup of coffee while listening to the Lunch with Norm podcast, knowing that you have an advocate and a partner in your business success. But wait, just mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Get the protection you need and visit jeffschick.com today. That's J-E-F-F-S-C-H-I-C-K.com. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, where is the man? What's going on? Hey, how are you? Good, I enjoyed the intro, dude. Nothing to apologize about there. You're, <laughs> you're very charming father and son banter. I was giggling the whole time. Oh, okay, very good. If you have anything else that we can talk about blundering, um, I would love to, you know, another creative mind out there, Mr. Musician. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'll I'll bounce it around the old noggin and see what see what other kind of blundering puns I can well, I can think up. Like Jimmy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Margaritaville. He didn't sing Margaritaville. Uh, who sang Margaritaville? Do you know? It wasn't I Jimmy Buffett. No, not Jimmy Buffett. I no, don't know. I thought it was. No, uh, no, it's uh, not. That's what I thought it was. It's it's Jimmy Buffett. Is it J Jimmy Buffett? What, yeah, what, it which one Jimmy am I Buffett. thinking? Of? I thought so. There was another one that sounds Make like me Jimmy think Buffett. I'm crazy, Norm, over here. There's I'm another like... famous song that everybody thinks is Jimmy Buffett, and it's not. It's not Cheeseburger in Paradise. But anyways, I just thought of it. Blunderville. Okay, instead of Margaritaville, Blunderville. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right, let's get I started. I can play the bass for it. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, let's talk about PPC. And let's talk about uh, the art and science of CTR optimization. So why don't we just yeah. dig into that and tell us a little bit more about... Did 
Did my camera just go out? I lost you for a second there, Norm. I don't know if it was me or you, but you're back. This now. is what I was talking about. Yeah, um, I've got it. I've. <laughs> I this is Ethernet, by the way. I don't it know. It wasn't the camera. On. It was everything. Camera, huh. audio, connection. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so tell okay. us a little bit about why people should be listening and uh, taking an interest in CTR optimization. Yeah, this is one of my favorite topics, um, which is why when you asked me what we should talk about, this is what I put in because um, I've spent a while as an Amazon seller, an Amazon brand investor, brand manager, PPC manager. Um, I have a whole company that just manages PPC for brands and manages conversion for brands. And the whole conversation, I've been in many different masterminds. I was telling your son, you and I see each other at conferences all the time and Amazon seller meetups and conferences. The conversation is always around ranking, right? The, the, top, the top subjects everyone wants to know about, ranking, reviews, um, and it's basically traffic and conversion, you know, like the two things that matter online. But uh, we tend to forget as sellers that there's a step in between traffic and conversion for Amazon sellers. Like you can get lots of traffic and you can have a great conversion. But if the traffic never clicks to the listing in the first place, even if it's a great converting listing, it doesn't matter how, how high converting the listing is. So it's really like another step in between. Like you have to get traffic to the listing thumbnail, then get someone to click on the thumbnail, then they can convert to a seller by adding it to their cart or purchasing it right then and there. So this is just one topic. I feel like it kind of fell, fell through the cracks for some reason. Like mm. there's so many masterminds and so many courses on what your images should look like, what every element of your content should look like on your on your listing and everything that you can do to convert the best. And there's so many courses and so so much content out there about PPC and external traffic and stuff like that. But click through rate optimization gets lost, even though it's absolutely critically important, just as important as traffic or or conversion. So there are things that you can do to increase your click through rate. And the the benefit that I have being in the position that I'm in with Sophie, my company, is that we have hundreds of brands that we either work on, have invested in, or are or, or managing PPC for every every month. Um, so we have new brands every month, and we we have plenty of room to test out different theories. So we have tested a lot, and that's our whole ethos is is to test and learn by experimentation and first principles. And there are things that work to increase click-through rate optimization. Some of them are pretty mind-blowing and people don't even know that they're even possible. So let's talk about them. How many things can you think of uh, can sellers do to help with their uh, uh, optimization? Yeah, there's a couple main categories. So the number one thing that, uh, that contributes to a high click-through rate is the primary image. And most people know that intuitively, but don't realize how critically important it is. And there's a story that I like to tell. This didn't happen to me, but it was told to me by a friend, uh, John Hefter, who was one of the know, late John. stage co-founders of, of Thrasio. Yeah. Yep. And they used to actually use this story as a case study to kind of attract the brands that they were looking to buy. They bought a brand called Angry Orange, and they're public about this. So it's fine to talk about it. This was in the, their first year of acquiring brands. They, they bought this brand. It's called Angry Orange. And it was a pet stain remover. And the brand was doing mid to high, I think, single digit seven, seven figures when they bought it. Uh, so it was in the single digit millions per year. Good brand, solid brand, solid margins. Um, it was a good acquisition. John's personal influence on the success of this brand once they acquired it was the first thing he did was change all of the packaging. So these are liquid products, right? They're pet stain removing liquids. Um, he changed it to these containers that were literally designed specifically to fit perfectly into the Amazon listing thumbnail box. That was the whole purpose of the packaging was just to maximize its visibility in that box. So it took up the whole box. It was like way more square, you know, so it, it, instead of a thin bottle that had a bunch of white space, it was like a way more square bottle. And you guys can actually search this. Those of you guys that are here live can even search this on Amazon.com. It's called Angry Orange. You'll see what I mean. 
on the packaging itself, he made it bright orange, like a safety vest that you'd see on a construction worker on the side of the road. Bright orange, neon orange. It, it jumps out at you. It's the first thing your eyes naturally go to before you even think when you search pet stain remover. So he had that. So those are two factors already. One, the packaging was optimized. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay, great. One, the packaging was optimized for the Amazon thumbnail. And two, it was eye-catching in a subconscious way. Color is a great way to do this, but shape can also do this or the design itself can do this. But the bright orange color was absolutely genius for him hmm. um, and worked great. And then the third thing he did was instead of having the package say huge angry orange on it, which is the brand, which is what most brands do. It's the brand is the main text on the packaging. He made that small. And the main text on the packaging was the main keyword that customers were searching for instead. And it's so big that you could view it without even clicking on it. So he basically got extra eye grabbing text. So now he's got a maximized image with a color and a design that catches the eye first no matter where it shows up on the front page. Um, and now he's got text on the packaging that describes the problem being searched. So what he had on there was pet stain remover. There you go, odor eliminator. You can see, instead of saying huge angry orange, it says odor eliminator. And it's super, super bright orange. And this is one that is in a vertical bottle. There's another one that's in like a square bottle as well. That takes up the whole image. But, uh, but yeah, so... You could see how that optimization could get him so many more clicks. And they 20X'd this brand by doing this. So it went from you know, a, a multi-million dollar, single digit million dollar brand to a well into the, the eight figures wow. brand just from this change. And so that's how powerful this, the, the primary image, and, and it's by far not the only thing. There are plenty of other things you can do without changing the primary image. And we'll get into those too, but that's how powerful it is. And it is the number one way to increase the click-through rate if you do those three things. You know, you just brought up a, a good point about primary image. We talk about it a lot, how important it is, but just sometimes uh, repackaging. So you saw what they did. Yeah. They, they shrunk the logo down. They brought out that keyword. They made it bright. They made it different. Sometimes it's just not going from an iPhone to a product photographer. It's your actual product that you, you have to look at. You don't have to do it yeah. at the beginning. But a again, this is where a good designer, when you're getting the product done the first time, works out really well. And it, it is different. Um, it's very different from retail packaging. So, yes, Angry Orange is probably an exception because it will – if it's sitting on the shelf as is, it'll get your attention just because it's that uh, neon orange. I mean, it's very well done, but most retail packaging is different than Amazon. Um, and one other thing I like about Angry Orange is they're not cluttered. You know, some, yes. some like, oh yeah, it's clean. Some products write a book on the label and you don't know right. what to read or what to look for. So great point. Yeah, that's 100% right. <clears throat> yeah, and I mean, that story really struck me. And we've seen it so many times ourselves where just changing, like, A-B testing a, uh, a different primary image can have just a huge impact on, on the click-through rate. And again, like the click-through rate should be just as important to everyone as the conversion rate, even though it's never talked about, never worked on there. There are no agencies that are dedicated to increasing click-through rate. There are hundreds, maybe even thousands of agencies dedicated to increasing conversion rate, right? So it's weird that we forget about this, even though it is just as important. Because if they never click onto the listing, they can never convert, you know? Right, exactly. Okay, what are some of the other things? Yeah, so the next category of things, um, oh, by the way, I just found the other brand I was, I was thinking about. Uh, is another success story relating to, to the primary image, just right before I get into this next category, uh, is Zesty Paws. You probably know about Zesty Paws, Norm. This is a, one of the craziest success stories in all of Amazon history. Um, this is AJ Patel's pet brand. Mm. AJ was actually one of my first customers when I had a launch service um, launching 
uh, brands in, in Europe. And he was running a skincare product brand at the time. You know, this is one of those times where you like you second guess your choices in life because I felt me and AJ were sort of on parallel paths back then. And then four years later, I read in the news, he exited his pets brand for six hundred million dollars. What? Six hundred million dollars. Zesty Paws, this brand right here. Yeah. This brand, AJ exited for six hundred million dollars and it took them. I think it was a total of five years, maybe even under five years for them to grow from start to just start to exit it's insane i mean it's numbers and he's a he's a kid i mean not a kid but he's like in his early 30s um a he's a young a guy you know so a kid a kid so yeah so and that again that's that's when you're like where did i go wrong <laughs> you know that's when you start questioning your uh your decisions but anyways this brand you'll see you know if you guys search and you probably saw just now when kelsey was sharing the screen um it's the same thing. It's optimized for the Amazon listing image. Like the, the packaging is purposely a fat, short cylinder so that looking on it from the side, it's a perfect square. Mm -hmm. So it takes up every single inch of the Amazon listing uh, thumbnail image. So it's another great example. And again, this brand sold for $600 million. So this stuff works. No, this is no joke. There you go. You see it, yeah. And if you search, uh, search like uh, dog supplements, just in the in the search term, and then you can see how it compares to other ones. You'll see why it catches the eye. Yeah, just search dog supplements. So, and you see, you see all these other things. And like you said, Norm, they're so busy. They there's a lot of white space, and then this orange one. It's orange. It takes up the yeah. whole square, and it's clear text. It says probiotics. You know, it's. It's just clearly better for Amazon. Yeah, it so, really does stand yeah. out. If you um, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, just check it out. Go to Amazon and check out Zesty Bites uh, or uh, Probiotic Bites or whatever it is, and you'll see. If you were to look at that page, where would your eye go to? And I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but that uh, that uh, neon orange, you know, oh, like that's angry two, orange. Two brands in a row with the neon orange, right? Right. Right. Yeah. So anyways, those are two really great examples. So check out Angry Orange and uh, check out uh, Zesty Paws. They're both really great examples about what Chris is talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's primary image. That's number one. Um, it's also the hardest thing to change and optimize. But, you know, it's worth it because we just went over, you know, eight and nine figure brands that that had this as one of their primary strategies. Right. So it's it's worth the work. Um, the next category of things that you can do is badges. So, um, and then there, there's another category after that, that's actually related to the badges, but we'll talk about the badges first. So there are a number of badges that you can get on your listing that do a number of things. So one that anybody can do is a clickable coupon. It shows up as a green banner. And again, we're talking, and it's like a neon green. So again, we're talking catching the eye if you compare like two listing thumbnails a good thought exercise is hey if i did this and there was another listing exactly like mine that didn't do this which one would the customer click so in this example we're talking about a clickable coupon right you mm -hmm. can do very low clickable coupons it doesn't have to be that much it could be a couple bucks it could be you know 10 percent off it could be less um but it catches the eye and by the way our data shows that only about 60% of customers uh, redeem it, even though it's as easy yep. as just clicking a button. So if you have a dollar coupon on average across all your orders, it's actually only going to be 60 cents. That That, that is, uh, so I was just talking to somebody today about that. I was a little higher. I said 66%, but we're, oh, we're, we're right there. Close. We're right there. Yeah. So but yeah, yeah. Look, if you put it out and you, you only have to, I think it's 5% is the lowest. But um, yeah, it, it grabs your attention. You know, it's it grabs it. It's orange as well, <laughs> or it's, I believe it's green. It's green or orange. orange. Yeah. Orange. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So see this. We keep coming back to this. There are recurring themes here. <laughs> um, so yeah. So that that it's really powerful. Um, I'm always surprised when sellers are reluctant to do this because again, if you if you did the thought exercise, my listing thumbnail with the coupon or another listing thumbnail without it, 
which one, if they're identical, is the customer going to click? You keep making decisions like that and isolating variables like that, they stack and they stack so much. Like you could do this multiple different times. We'll talk about a couple more different badges you could do now. So another one that you can do. Oh, and by the way, before we go off the clickable coupon, the, one of the benefits of that is that affects click-through rate and conversion. So now you're getting more clicks to the listing and more conversions on the listing, which is really powerful. Mm. But there are other badges where you actually don't have to do a discount. You don't have to lose anything. All it takes is a little bit of work and messaging. So an example is the Climate Pledge Friendly Badge. Uh, the Climate Pledge Friendly Badge is a badge that Amazon gives to brands that conform with any one of a number of different uh, types of, of uh, environmental commitments. So Amazon has their own, uh, their own program. It's called Compact by Design. And it has certain certifications and you can download the PDF online easily. If you just Google it, Compact by Design, you'll find it, the specs. Um, if you conform to that, uh, you can pretty much automatically just easily get into this climate pledge friendly program and you get the badge on your listing thumbnail and on your listing. But even if you don't conform to this program, Amazon gives you access to their partner network of dozens and dozens of different third party environmental certifications that you can apply for. And if you get all you need to do is get one and you prove to Amazon that you did it and they will give you this climate pledge friendly badge. So basically, pretty much any brand can do this if they work hard enough. Mm -hmm. If you look through the different, thank you for, for dropping the link there, Kelsey. Yeah. So that's the compact by design program, but there's also dozens of other programs that Amazon allows you to certify under. And as soon as you have one, you can get the climate pledge friendly badge. Some of them are free, like the Amazon's own compact by design. Other ones you have to pay. Some of them are even a couple thousand dollars. But once I, I really recommend every single person who's listening to this, who's actively selling, do this because once you get it, it does a number of things. One, it puts a, a green badge on your listing that not only catches the eye subconsciously, but even from the, the shopper's conscious mind, being that it's climate pledge friendly, it makes them feel like a better person clicking it and they feel like they're supporting a brand that actually cares about the environment. Um, so it attracts clicks from both parts of the shopper's consciousness, the subconscious and the conscious uh, parts. Uh, but then also it adds to the listing itself as well. So again, this is something that helps with click-through rate and conversion. And there's yet another benefit that I'm not going to go over now because I'm going to talk about it later um, in this conversation. But uh, it's it's really it's really really cool. Uh, but the main things attracts the eye, allows the shopper to rationalize the purchase and the click, and it affects both click through rate and conversion. Plus, once you get it, you get it for for life. Uh, ostensibly, we'll see. Um, there's actually a dedicated email that you can use to request this. If you click this compact by design link that's been dropped uh, by Kelsey in the chat here, and you think that you do conform, you can use this dedicated email. I think it's something like climate pledge friendly at amazon.com, something like something of the sort. You'll find it by Googling. Um, and if you don't, I'm happy to send it. I have it in my one note somewhere. I'll, I'll pull it up. But, uh, but yeah, so this is something everybody should do. Then there's another badge. Um, I mean, there's actually a bunch of badges you can explore, but another one that's, that's, simple and easy for most of you guys to do it's called the small business badge so the small business badge um it adds again to the listing thumbnail and it adds to the listing but the main thing it's doing is helping you with click-through rate it looks like a little sh a little icon of a shop like a physical shop um and it says small business and uh amazon released this because of the pressure over the last couple of years of so many articles coming out about how much of Amazon is just trash coming straight from factories in China and it was low quality or it was knockoff goods and stuff like that. So Amazon became obsessed with trying to reverse this, this public perception that their, their products were all trash or, or knockoffs. And so this is part of their, their public you know, campaign to change that perception. And, um, and it's very real because 
that is the case. You know, a lot of people would go to Shopify or search Google to buy very nice things, whereas they might go to Amazon to buy things that they just use generally in their home. So a lot, I think it's a real perception that that shoppers have. And so this actually works to, to make shoppers think, oh, I'm really buying from like, it almost makes them feel like I'm buying local. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm buying from a small business. I'm buying from a, a local business. It's it's not some random overseas huge corporation or factory that's just selling me this. Um, it feels more trusted. Trusted. So this is a great way to increase click through rate. Plus, again, it adds to your listing itself as well. So it can help with your conversion rate too, which is really cool. So why don't we just stop there for a second? Uh, yeah. It's the bottom of the hour and. For those of you who will uh, stick with this podcast and listen, you know what's coming up. It's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people, you'll get a second entry. If it's your first time listening, at the very end of the podcast, we provide a giveaway. Our guest has provided a giveaway today, which is awesome. And um, we give it away. We put it on a wheel. We give it a spin. And you get if you get selected, you win the prize. So hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you get a second entry. Chris, why don't you tell us about the giveaway? Yeah, the giveaway is um, a fully comped ticket to our event at the end of the month, the Profitable PPC Challenge. And uh, this is an exclusive event. It's sold out every time we we have it. Um, we accept somewhere around one out of every three participants. So, um, and And the information that's shared in there and the exercises you do, and the mentors you get in touch with for those five days are completely unmatched in uh, in this space. It's an eight to one participant to mentor ratio, which is about 10 times less than a regular mastermind or event that you'll find, which is normally 80 to one, you know, one mentor to every 80 participants. So everyone gets dedicated one-on-one attention to help their PPC improve. Um, you're basically guaranteed to have your PPC improve in so many different ways by the time you're done with it. We teach a lot of different things in there, including um, s- types of campaigns that even Amazon is not masters at. There's a type of campaign retargeting called step uh, campaigns, self-targeted product placement campaigns that we discovered that uh, I did a little video on. And then I got Amazon executives emailing me, asking me how to set them up. <laughs> so uh so we teach that we teach a lot of underground things that all come from our own uh experimental lab ppc laboratory over the course of five days um and so yeah we're giving away a comp ticket to that and the lucky winner will will come and, and join me for for five days from february 20th to february 24th and it's all digital so you can do it from anywhere in the world that sounds fantastic what a what a great uh giveaway and you uh, and I know uh, you're not just saying it, but one out of three people are accepted into it. So um, anyways, great prize. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. You don't have to buy the ticket and get on a plane. It's virtual. It's over five days. So with that being said, Kelsey, can we have another word from our sponsor? I want to give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors to help keep this podcast running. The Lunch with Norm podcast would not be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro, Clear Ads, Jeff Schick Law, Rebate.com, Honu Worldwide, Digital Blacksmiths, Netfluence, Extreme Power, and Startup Club. Now back to the show. All right, we're back. Now, I guess we can either continue on with badges or the next point. All right. Yeah, yeah. So um so we're not doing the wheel of Kelsey, huh? Not yet. It okay, happens okay, at the end. Up. Okay, cool. See, you're cool. a first time wait. listener. I can tell. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. I I like I said, I'm gonna get a wheel of Chris back here. Um <laughs> so let's keep going with the badges since we're we're on uh, on track with the badges. So okay. um we got the small business badge, right? So in order to be applicable for that, you have to be doing under 50 million a year in revenue. So that's basically the only requirement. As long as you have that, all you have to do is show Amazon proof of that um, and they will give you this badge. So it's another free one. Um, Then moving on with the badges, there are badges that 
people know about. These are a little bit more difficult to get, which is the bestseller badge, Amazon's choice badge. So the bestseller badge you get by being the top seller in your subcategory. So the only way that you could possibly affect that is by changing subcategories. If there are multiple subcategories that apply to you um, and going to a subcategory where you're more likely to be the number one bestseller. Uh, I found when I'm able to get the bestseller badge in a category, it dramatically increases the click-through mm -hmm. rate and conversion rate. I mean, it has a huge impact. It's, it's, it's wild. Uh, but it also makes you a target, basically paints a, a bullseye target right on your face. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So that one's a little more difficult to get. The Climate Pledge Friendly and the, and the small business, almost anybody can do if you just work hard enough. Um, but then there's the Amazon's Choice Badge. And the Amazon's Choice Badge, um, it's always been fickle in, in my experience to, to be able to get and keep the Amazon's Choice Badge. It, cho choice badge it, badge it's by keyword so um you get you can a lot of different products can have an amazon's choice badge in a given niche for different keywords um and supposedly it's from alexa searches but i have people on my team who have gotten the amazon's choice badge just by driving relevant traffic from specific keywords really really hard um and have just gotten it mm -hmm. so that's another badge. Again, that one's more fickle, but it does have a, a significant impact on your click-through rate. Um, yeah. So that's the category of badges. Again, I'd say the two main ones that, or the three main ones that I'd focus on that are completely under your control at all times are the clickable coupon, the climate pledge friendly badge, and the small business badge. The next category is not really a category on its own, but it's what happens when you start to stack some of some of these previous uh, badges. You know what? Actually, before I even get into this, this is a really, really cool one, really exciting one. Um, there's one more thing that contributes to it, and that is the strike through price. So getting a strike through price, this is another thing that, again, if you did the A-B test and you said, hey, two identical listings, one has a strike through price, one doesn't which one are they going to click? It's going to be the one with the strike through price. Not only does it look like you're getting a deal with the strike through price, but it also has a color. It has the old price in beet red and has the new price in black. So again, it adds color. It catches the eye a little bit more. Um, and you to get a strike through price, it has the price has to be the sale price that you put into the back end of your listing has to be lower than the average price of the product over the last 30 days. So that is something that uh, that's not possible to always have. And that's the reason Amazon has that rule because otherwise every single product would have, a, would have a strike through price and would look like it was on sale. So that's the only thing about that. You can get that from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, so there we go. We got strike through price. We've got all these badges. We've got primary image optimization. Now what happens when you combine a bunch of these, these tactics, when you combine the climate pledge friendly badge, the small business badge, a strike through price, a coupon. Um, if you can, some of these other badges. What happens is not only does it catch the eye with the color, not only does it catch the eye with either making them think that it's environmentally friendly or getting a deal or having a coupon attached to it or just more trust, but it does something else, something else really magical. What it does relates to Amazon shoppers who use their mobile phone to shop. And if you look at what mobile search results, and this is really interesting for anybody who's listening, if you can, if you're not driving or anything like that, I'd, I'd encourage you to do this live with us right now is open up your Amazon app on your phone. Or if you don't have it, go to Amazon on, in your browser on your phone. And search, uh, one, one thing that I like to do is organic coffee. And I'm doing this with you guys right now with myself. I search the, the, the word organic coffee. Now, as you scroll through the search results, you'll notice something really interesting. Not only will you see a lot of the, the tactics that we just mentioned, you'll see the small business badge. Now, this has to be on mobile, Kelsey. That's the thing. So, but no, so this, this it, it, ha it will still help to have the visual, but the this only applies to mobile search results now you're going to start seeing some of the things that we mentioned you're going to see 
some brands that have climate pledge friendly. You're going to see some brands have strike through prices with the red minus 20%. You're going to see brands with the small business badge. But there's something else that that you may only subconsciously have noticed, not consciously noticed. The brands that have all of the strategies that we just mentioned are much, much bigger in search results than the brands that don't have the strategies. They actually physically take up more space. And this is more powerful than you can imagine because when someone is scrolling through search results, it's a, it's an attention economy, right? It's an it's a game of attention. You're going to stop sort of wherever you stop. You know, we're we're all accustomed to just scrolling everything, scrolling Instagram, scrolling TikTok, scrolling Facebook feed, scrolling Google News feed, whatever. And you scroll and stop with your thumb, then you scroll up and stop with your thumb, and it's kind of almost as there's some amount of randomness to where you land. And so having more space at, when you really combine these it literally gets to the point where on most phones, my phone included, the listing will be the only listing that is fully shown. And the next listing will be partially shown but cut off. Whereas if you if you reach a number of different listings that don't have any of these strategies, you could fit three full listings on one phone screen. So it's it's huge. It's a huge difference. We've actually measured it pixel by pixel. And you can increase it up to 80%. Wow. the size of a listing. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's it's like if it, if you increase it 100% it to be double, right? So 80% it's not far off of doubling the actual area of your listing thumbnail. So this when you when you really like step back and think about it and you're looking at it yourself, it's crazy. The, the amount of money the tens of, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars people put into Amazon PPC just to get more eyeballs on the listing, get more traffic to their listing thumbnail, where these things you do once, and many of them are free, and you permanently are getting more clicks, more traffic to your listing. It becomes like, oh, so obvious, right? Like clear as day that that is the next thing that you need to do. So yeah, so that is uh that's pretty much it that oh. wraps wraps the ctr uh prophecy that i that i have to deliver you guys that's a lot of great information you know as an expert uh, where do you see and chris i know you're going to come back and you're going to say how long is a piece of string but where should be where's the target for your conversion rate yeah, um, yeah, and you're right because it is different category by category. Um, you mean click through rate? Yeah, yeah. So it's really, it's really, really tough to say because it could be anywhere from a fraction of a percent to you know multiple percents. Um, so yeah, it's I I don't know if I could really put a benchmark on it because of how dramatically different it tends to be not only from category to category, but from mm -hmm. product to product. I think the most important thing to do is to go to Product Opportunity Explorer inside Seller Central and Brand Analytics inside Seller Central. And what you can do is, is by keyword, you can get a benchmark on what the click-through rate is for the, the keyword in general for the page one listings. And then you can see what yours is. And that's what really matters. Now you can see for particular search terms that you're concerned with how you stack up with the competition. And then you'll know, is my click-through rate bad or is my click-through rate good? Okay. Now, uh, for the listeners, if you do have any uh, questions or comments for Chris, uh, please put them into the comment section. We are going to be cutting off uh, right after the questions today, after the Wheel of Kelsey, uh, because I have that live coming up. So uh, anyways, uh, any questions that are that you want, throw them into the comments section. Uh, Chris, I, I have a, a comment that uh, I see Kelsey made, actually. And he said, uh, what do I do in the next hour to increase my uh, click-through rate? Anything That's a great question. Is it? Good, good. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, there, the the most obvious things are that you could do instantly yeah. are you can enable a clickable coupon, mm -hmm. you can apply for the small business badge as long as you're not doing over fifty million a year, um, 
and you can see if you apply for the Climate Pledge Friendly Badge by clicking the link that Kelsey already put in the chat. If you do those three things, though, you could do those three things not in an hour. You could do those three, three things in 20 minutes. Um, the, then you'll literally likely wake up tomorrow morning with a improved, potentially critically improved click-through rate. Wow. Just on those few things. Yep. Within the hour. That's awesome. That's right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's probably it for my questions. Uh, anything else that you want to talk about, Chris, before we get to the, the questions in the chat? Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to go to the questions. All yeah. right. Let's do it, Kels. All right. So we got lots over here. Um, just a few thank yous from. So Marcia says, great info, Chris. The coffee was a great example. Um, and let me see. We'll jump into a question. You did that from, for my sake from claudia uh My is there a pl is there a place where you can find what colors go well with a particular niche uh the product we're working on is the farmhouse decor niche what colors mm. should we use for our branding website social media and your packaging or is there some sort of guideline that resources that you you, you have yeah well so, <laughs> it's it some of you guys are going to hate my answer some of you guys are going to going to love my answer um so you know how we were talking about bright orange and how how awesome that that color was for these two niches that we were talking about pet stain remover and and pet supplements. Well, in the farmhouse decor niche, you're not really going to want to put bright orange on you your your primary. I was image. hoping that's what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not necessarily farmhouse decor and that's not what people are looking for when they're searching farmhouse decor. So what you want is whatever is going to attract the eye and get the click from somebody who's searching that keyword. So this is a creative process. And when it comes to creative processes, something changed this year that has never been true any other year up until this year, this year of 2023, when it comes to creative processes and creatives in general, and that is artificial intelligence. So we're now in an age where Creatives, including text and visual creatives, can be generated by artificial intelligence that in many cases are better mm -hmm. than what you could get from a person. Not always, but in many cases. And in most cases, better than what you could afford. Um, so I would actually recommend that you use a tool called MidJourney. MidJourney is an AI image generation tool. It is free. I think up to something like 50 images per month or something like that. Uh, you do have to download Discord, which is a, a chat server app. Uh, it's not not hard to learn. You just you just download it. You can follow the tutorial. Um, so it's Midjourney, M-I-D-J-O-U-R-N-E-Y, Midjourney, all one word. And what you're going to do is type in there um, farmhouse decor branding packet and or farmhouse decor product uh design or farmhouse decor logo design or farmhouse decor the, the particular project yeah you could say if the product for instance is um a, a knitted rope wall hanging you could say farmhouse decor knitted rope wall hanging uh branding guide and it will generate things for you that are gorgeous and give you, you're not going to be able to just take it and use it instantly, but you're going to get really good inspiration because it's programmed to be what humans would consider beautiful. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool way to generate some ideas. So I would do that. What about beard styles? What can humans uh, consider beautiful? I don't, I think if you want inspiration <laughs> from beard styles, all you have to do is watch this podcast. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. And, and by the way, one of my favorite uh, photographs ever taken. Oh, I know was, where you're going with this. I know where you're going. And with it this. wasn't my idea, but there was this guy named Chris that came up to me in this uh, establishment and he uh, said, Hey, you want to take a picture? My hair, your beard. Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yep. I knew where you were going with that. That's oh, one of my, my favorite pictures ever, too. Oh, I, memories of when I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need memories now. You could just recreate it every time you and I hang out, Norm. So, and we can upload it to Mid Journey, 
and have different hairstyles, beard yeah, styles. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We could generate all different variations of oh. it. Too. Yeah, it okay. Fun. So, and by the way, one other thing, Claudia, um, this is 100% what Chris was talking about with Mid Journey. But whenever I think of a, a country pattern, like this is back old school. It would be more of the earthy tones, you know, earth tones. Yeah. Um, but you could just, again, on Google, old fashioned, just type in um, color palettes for country living or something like that, and you'll see it'll come up. But Mid Journey uh, is is a great option now. And by the way, if everything goes out within the next couple of weeks, um, there we are putting out a Mid Journey, like a full course on it. So, oh, cool. Yeah. That's, I can't wait to watch that. I'm about to put out a, a, a white paper on it. I just oh. released a white paper for sellers on ChatGPT prompts for, for Amazon sellers. I'd so love cool. to get that if you want to send it over to me. I, I'd love to read it. Absolutely. Yeah, Fantastic. I will. It's not done yet, but we, okay. I will send it to you. Yeah, when, that's when the same like with this. mid. Actually, the mid journey is done. It's just uh, translation now. Nice. Okay. Let's see. All right. Next, next question. question. Uh, so Claudia says, I see one that says, uh, this is going back to the coffee example, uh, the one one that says SNAP EBT eligible. Is that food stamps in the US? I haven't explored the SNAP EBT eligible uh, badge. I know it is for consumables products. Um, but yeah, I haven't explored it. I haven't tried to get it because none of the products that we were using to experiment with these things on had that as an as an opportunity. I'd love to hear if you actually go for that, Claudia, how it turns out for you, because it, it is something that adds to the the listing thumbnail uh, of the product. So Kelsey, make a note of that and send it over to Vandana to explore too, because I don't know that either. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Uh, also, just a reminder that we have our Wheel of Kelsey happening. Uh, you can win one free ticket to Chris's uh, PPC challenge. Uh, there is a qualification, um, so you have to be an existing seller uh, with a product live on Amazon. Uh, but if you are, take two people for an extra entry and we're going to be going there. What's the value of that, Chris? That uh, is $97. Perfect. Very good. All right. And it's exclusive, by the way. So it's with uh, Chris's group. Yes. All right. So from Marsha, uh, can you please tell us again where you find the click through rates you just outlined? Uh, so you could see that, I mean, a lot of different places. So. You can see them in your PPC reports. Uh, you can see your your click through rates there for different keywords, um, and you can also see in Product Opportunity Explorer the click through rates for the space, and in Brand Analytics you can see your click through rates per product per keyword, uh, and compare it with the the average for the space for the brand. So. Search. Yeah. Search performance has it as well, right? Search performance report. Yeah, search performance yeah. report. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, our last question, it looks like, is from Claudia. Uh, where should I send external traffic? Uh, my listing, storefront, or landing page, then to Amazon? Uh, will this help my CTR? So when you're sending external traffic, if you send it directly to your Amazon listing, you don't need to worry about click-through rate because the traffic is going right there. The click-through rate optimization you're trying to do in that case is whatever external uh, platform it is, whether it's email or it's the, a Google ad or um, whatever it is, or Google SEO. Um, so these days, typically you're gonna use an Amazon attribution link to track the sales that you get uh, from the external traffic and you, you wanna utilize the 10% bonus that Amazon actually gives you for driving external traffic, uh, which is which is great, makes it more economical for you, um, and drive it to your listing. Because in my experience, driving traffic to the storefront does not convert as well. Um, I know a lot of sellers experimenting with this, trying to get it to work. It's it's less of a, of a home run than driving them to your listing. Um, the landing page to Amazon is a tactic that has been done for years and years, especially when it was possible to and and compliant still, or maybe not explicitly non-compliant to use super URLs mm -hmm. and search find buy flows. Um, so you'd send traffic to a landing page that would instruct the seller what to do, and then you'd send them to search results, and then they would click. 
and then they would buy. So in that case, the click-through rate mattered somewhat. But you can't do that anymore without explicitly violating Amazon's terms of service. So I wouldn't recommend it. So you'll want to just send the traffic to the listing. Okay. So because of time today, and I've got to get on that Amazon Live, what are we selling today, Kels? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get over to the Wheel of Kelsey. I know we uh, missed out on one of the call outs, but let's, uh, let's do that first. Well, Norm, if you need to get going, I can always close out the podcast for you. That's okay, okay, great. Well, maybe we should do that because I've got to study what I am not talking Fashionably about. Late. Fashionably <laughs> yeah. late. Again, I, like Norm. I said, Chris, but you know what, Chris? It's been really awesome having you on. Also, because I didn't have to do much talking because you're so smart. Uh, it's been great. I want to get you to come back on at uh, some point. And I can't wait. If you guys Let's want a great uh, event, like just hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. And you will be so informed with all these. Like, I know the group. I know the guys in the group. Uh, it's a, it's awesome. So um, this is with, uh, with it's with Titan, right? Uh, the, PPC? the PPC challenge is with Sophie. Not well, with oh, Titan. it's you. Oh, yeah. okay. It's with Sophie. So this is, uh, is. your your agency. Okay. Yes. Check it out. You got to you gotta check this out. It's a great prize, great giveaway. Chris, I'm going to contact you a bit later. But it's been awesome having you on. It's been great, bro. I love that we finally did this. We've been talking I know, about it for a I while. Know. So it's awesome. Okay. We'll see you later. All right. See you later, brother. Bye. All right. See you, Norm. All right. So um, we're going to throw it over to a sponsor and then we'll uh, get over to the Wheel of Kelsey. Cool. All right. Here we go. Launching products isn't like it used to be. To successfully launch your product, you need to hit that algorithm from all sides. Driving external sales, boosting social signals, and increasing product listing engagement are fundamental to success. Rebate is the first and only launch platform that delivers across this broad range. Get your product featured on Amazon.Live through Rebate's Influencer Program. With this service, your product gets instant exposure to large audiences of shoppers and permanent placement on Amazon Influencer Storefront, which drives perpetual sales. Run a sweepstakes campaign on Rebate and connect with shoppers off Amazon. And lastly, drive external sales with tried and true deals campaigns. Visit Rebate.com today and get started with your 14-day free trial. All right, so it's time for the Will Kelsey, Chris. I'm excited for you to see this. I think you're me gonna too. It. So uh, it, it does come in pretty loud. So just uh, you've been warned. But uh, Frank here we go. Will Kelsey. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right. So thank you everyone for entering today's Wheel of Kelsey. We do this every episode uh, on the podcast. So uh, if you missed it out, uh, make sure you come back next time and enter. Uh, we got a question here from Marsha. Chris, where are you located? I'm in New Jersey, in Princeton. Princeton, New Jersey, where, where the university is. All right. Awesome. And uh, okay. So here we go. I'll give this a shuffle and give it a spin. If you are the winner, please email me k at lunchwithnorm.com. And let's see. Coming in. Congratulations. Please send me an email. Nice. And I'll set you up with Chris. Uh, there is that qualification. So um, I'll just be double checking. And if not, then we'll have to move on to the next person. But uh, congratulations. And uh, looking forward to connecting you. OK. And uh, Chris, cool. how can people reach you? contact information if you have any plugs go ahead yeah yeah um if you want to reach me personally you can dm me on instagram hippie mogul is my taggle tag hippie mogul and uh if you want to email me you can at hello at sophie society.com and uh yeah that's that's those are probably the best ways and uh humming in excited to see you on the inside of the profitable ppc challenge Okay, awesome. I'll be looking well, for you. Thank you so much, Chris, uh, for coming on. It's been great. And I can see from the comments that uh, people have learned a lot. So we really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to remove you from the screen, but just uh, stick around if you can. And uh, uh, thanks again for coming on the podcast. For sure. Thanks for having me. Can't wait till, uh, till next time when I can come back and hang with you guys again.
Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcasts, click over here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.